Hello, my name is Dennis Van Elstorp and I am pleased to introduce you to the Be Informed Partnership. This extension initiative is meant to help use beekeepers' real-world experiences help their real-world problems. This brief video will just quickly explain why we think this project is needed, how we think this project will help, and who is involved. A lot of the details can be found at the beinformed.org website and we encourage you to go there so why is this project needed? As most beekeepers know, honeybees are an essential part of our agricultural system. We estimate that directly or indirectly, honeybees pollinate about one in every three bites of food we eat. In the United States alone, it's estimated that over 19 billion dollars worth of, of crops are either pollinated or benefit from pollination by honeybees. Considering this importance, it's worrying to note that over the last four years, we have lost, on average, 33% of our overwintering colonies. Now, this has not meant that we've reduced the total number of colonies in the country over the summer. In fact, there's evidence that this number has increased slightly. However, in order to increase those numbers and make up for those losses, beekeepers have to split their colonies heavily. And this is an expensive endeavor. And so we know that this 33% loss is unsustainable. And we worry not only about the beekeepers who are not able to keep this expensive way of beekeeping up, but also for those producers who rely on those honeybees for pollination. However, a careful look at our overwintering losses um, does reveal something interesting. Basically, while the average is 33%, the distribution is great. We see some beekeepers not losing any colonies versus some who are losing 90% or better of their colonies. If we look at the data from the winter of 2009 and 2010 specifically, just looking at those large beekeepers who manage more than 500 colonies, we find that in fact 25% or a quarter of responding beekeepers lost less than 14% of their operation, which is a very sustainable and normal level of loss. However, on the opposite end of the extreme, another 25% of beekeepers lost 53% or more of their operation. And this is a very heavy loss and is unsustainable. So the question is, is what is different between those beekeepers who lose few colonies versus those who lose a lot of colonies? And in essence, that is what this project is trying to find out and relay back to beekeepers so beekeepers can make informed decisions about what management practices to use and not. So how do we plan on doing this? In essence, we're proposing over the next five years to implement a series of different levels of survey. The first survey level is overwintering loss survey and we've done this for the last four years and plan to continue for the next five. The next level of survey and the one which I'll discuss in more detail just now is the level two survey. And this survey is a retrospective survey asking beekeepers what management practices they used over the last year. So let's look at this in more detail. Take, for instance, the fungal disease Nosema species. There are two Nosema species in the country, Nosema apis and Nosema serrana, and both are spore-forming, as you can see in this slide. There's a newer Nosema, Nosema serrana, was probably introduced in the 80s and is thought to, to cause increased losses in many colonies and many parts of the country. So how Tier 2 survey plans to look and incorporate how to deal with nosemas by asking some simple questions. And we did this when we were beta testing this idea with Pennsylvania beekeepers in 2008-2009. Basically, we asked beekeepers if they had treated for nosema the previous fall. 25% of the responding beekeepers said they did treat last fall for nosema, and those who treated lost fewer colonies than those who did not. If you look at the data on the bottom, you can see that those who reported treating for nosema lost 29.8% of their colonies versus those who did not, who lost 38.3% of their colonies. We are convinced that by presenting data in this very basic and uninterpreted form, beekeepers will be able to look at that data and decide if they want to treat or not treat for nosema on their own. We want to be very quick in relaying the results of the surveys back to beekeepers, and we've got a lot of innovative ways on how to do that. While in the first year we'll be issuing reports, we also will be working on developing a very large database which will contain all historical records of disease levels and also the results of our survey. 
We then will be delivering the results of these automatically in future years, but also through different areas like our sister website at eExtension, um, the Bee Health website, and eventually we want to have telephone apps so beekeepers can both add and look up the results of survey tests in the field. So who is involved? You can get a lot of the specific names and, and responsibilities at the beeinformed.org website. However, basically, we have tried to include in our team of directors a whole host of recognized bee experts in this country. But we've also included in our team extension specialists, economists, statisticians, and epidemiologists. And it's basically what we're going to use is human epidemiological approaches and apply those to the study of bee diseases and bee management practices to help figure out which practices work and which practices don't. Complementing the team of directors is also a team of very highly skilled personnel who will be on the ground and, and behind computers either collecting data, helping do phone surveys, helping develop websites, helping do the epidemiological data. And so we're very excited about the team that we have in place to make this project work. We also have very strong linkages to different bee organizations both at the federal and state levels. These include state and federal bee groups, Apri Inspectors of America, research consortiums like the, the CAP project that's already been funded, arms of the federal government including the USDA Agricultural Research Service and APHIS, and also groups that are dedicated to helping beekeepers such as Project APHIS-M, and also groups that are reliant on bees for pollination such as the California Almond Board. But most importantly, we need you to be involved in this project. Whether you're a small beekeeper with two hives, or whether you manage thousands of hives, whether you keep your colonies up north or keep them in the south, if you keep colonies for honey production, for pollination, or to rear queens, we need you to be involved in this project for it to be successful. So be included, be involved, be informed. Go to the Be Informed website and sign up.